In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up multiple WordPress blogs using a single database uh, and without using the WordPress networking or multi-blog feature. If you want to create a true multi-blogging site with lots of blogs, then, then using the WordPress networking feature to set up a multi-blogging site is probably best. And there's a tutorial on my blog, edutalk.org, that shows you how to do that. But if you're only going to have a few, a half a dozen or so, and you don't really want to get into the details of how to manage a multi-network, then it's pretty simple just to replicate the source code and use the same database to set up multiple blogs pretty easily. So the first thing you'll need, obviously, is a copy of the WordPress source code. So download it from WordPress.org. And I'm just going to go through quickly showing you how to install WordPress manually. I have a detailed tutorial on my website, edutalk.org, that shows this in detail. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the initial install process quickly and then show you how to take that initial install and quickly replicate it. Um, so I've downloaded the source code. We'll log into the site. I'm going to use this ldoom.com site and we'll just install a blog here in a subdirectory. Uh, this site is installed in root. So if I log in to control panel, you log in FTP, however you manage your site, you'll see that my normal site is in root. So I'm going to install WordPress in a subdirectory here. So we'll upload, and again, I'm going to go through this process quickly. There's a detailed tutorial on my website if you want to see it a little slower and a little more detail. Okay, the source code is uploaded, so we'll go to our file system, refresh and extract it. It's extracted in a subdirectory called WordPress. I'll delete the zip file and we'll just leave it called WordPress. Uh, now we'll go back to our control panel, create our database. We'll call it WordPress. We'll create a user here. We'll just call the user WP for now. Get us a password and then add that user to the WordPress database and give all privileges. Now that we have the database created, we've uploaded the source code, let's go to our browser, navigate to our install, and enter our information. Database is called WordPress, users WP, that's the password, it's localhost, and we'll leave the prefix WP for this one. Run the install, site title, test1, admin, and an easy password to remember for now, and install it. Now we have our first site installed, and it's in the WordPress subdirectory. If we go back and look at what we have, we have here, this is our install of WordPress. Uh, if we look at our database, we'll see that we have the WordPress database, and we have our tables there, and they're all prefixed with WP. So now we have that initial install. What we need to do is replicate this. So the easiest way to replicate is to simply, uh, one other tip I'll show you here just while I'm here. Uh, notice here when I created this database, it created the actual database as Latin 1 Swedish. So if you're doing a new install at the very beginning, you probably want to change that. Let me just jump over to operations and change that. Database coalition. And I'm just going to make it UTF-8 general so that it matches the collation of uh, the tables created. Okay, so now we have a working install in WordPress. Now how do we duplicate that quickly? Let's just go back to our file manager. And what I want to do is take WordPress, the entire subdirectory, and I want to make a copy of it. So I'm just going to right click here, copy, and we'll put it in HTML and we'll call it WordPress 1. So now I've just copied my source code. Now I could sit here and right click, copy, and do that several times if I want. WordPress 2. There's another install. I'll go ahead and do 3. So now I have four blogs here. WordPress, WordPress 1, 2, and 3. What I need to do with each one of these that I copied then is just to go into the source code of each one, open the config file, or edit the config file, and scroll down and make one change. And all we want to do is change this table prefix to something different. So I'm going to make this table prefix 1 and save. 
and then I'll go out and make changes to my others the same way. I'll go into 2, or edit, make the prefix of that one WP2. And essentially all we're doing here is when I visit these sites now in the browser, is that it's going to have all the connection information for the database, but it's not going to see any tables since we're changing the table prefix. So it's going to prompt me to create new tables. And I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. Let me change this last one, WP3. Save and close. Okay, so now what we have, we have our four installs. This WordPress is completely installed and working. Here it is. But now if I go to WordPress 1, notice it doesn't recognize that it exists. And it's just asking me, it finds the database, but there are no tables there. So it's asking me to set up this uh, blog. So I'll call this test2 admin. We'll put a password, email, install. And there it is. So now I have a completely independent working blog at WordPress 1 that's completely independent from the one that I have at WordPress. If I were to go to WordPress 2, it's going to prompt me to set it up. So we'll just call it test 3. So there's my test 3 site. It's in WordPress 2. My numbers are off a little bit, but you get the idea. And let me set up my last one here. WordPress 3. Okay, so now in just a short few minutes what I've done is I've installed WordPress in a subdirectory on my site and that's a completely functional independent blog and then I have three others as well. One called WordPress 1. I didn't need to call it WordPress 1. I could have called it anything of course. Uh, one that's going to be at WordPress 2 and one that's at WordPress 3. And if you look at what happened, if we go back and look at our database now, uh, here is the, are the initial tables set up for my first blog, but now if I refresh, notice here I have a complete set of tables set up for each of the blogs that I have. So here are my WordPress and then my 1, 2, and 3. So I basically have four separate blogs, independent blogs, set up using this same database with just different sets of tables. So you could essentially do this with an unlimited number virtually of, uh, of blogs using the same database. I've had uh, 60 or 70 blogs in the past set up using one database like this. So it's a really quick and easy way to set up a blog and then use that same database to quickly uh, replicate that blog without having to re-upload your source code and create new databases and so forth. So if you have need to do this, hopefully this tutorial helps you and uh, gives you some ideas about how to do that.